truck around. Yes, sir, pal. Him and his fool chemistry set. Look what he done to my hair. How'd he do that? Invented something called Bodine Hair Darkener. <laughs> Turned me into a platinum blonde. Now nice shine to it. Shine, it glows in the dark. <laughs> in the middle of a great experiment. This works. It works. I've done it. George, what? Invented purple orange juice. <laughs> I'm going to make a fortune. How? How? When somebody comes along and needs purple orange juice, they's going to have to deal with me. <laughs> Grace going to turn purple when she sees this man. <laughs> Paul wants you to drive him down to the bank. Hot dog. That'll give me a chance to show them my greatest discovery of all. What's that? Something scientists have been trying to find for years. Where'd you get it? I didn't get it. I invented it. <laughs> this peel can turn water into gasoline. <laughs> all us great scientists gets laughed at. <laughs> that don't bother us none. <laughs> Someday you'll be proud to say she was my lab assistant. Oh, well, what does the lab assistant do? Cleans up a mess. <laughs> How's it going, Miss Hathaway? Everything ready? Right, Chief. Vintage champagne, chilled to perfection, imported caviar. Oh, good. You know, Mrs. Sebastian is used to the best. What a man. Sponge King, shipping magnet. You got the expensive caviar, I hope. Ten dollars an ounce. <laughs> Ten dollars an ounce? That's impossible. Well, see for yourself. Ten ounces, one hundred dollars. <laughs> you left one in there. <laughs> no, I didn't. All right, but let's leave the can around so Sebastian can see it. <laughs> that will hardly impress a man like Mr. Lucas Sebastian. He is purported to be a billionaire. Yeah. <laughs> Think of that. Real live billionaire. And quite a remarkable man. Adventurer, world traveler, oceanographer, authority in marine biology. One billion dollars. <laughs> That's a thousand. Me. The concept that the form of the future lies at the bottom of the ocean is absolutely brilliant. Real live billionaire. How exciting. Forming the ocean's depths. Doing what? Forming the depths of the ocean for food. Well, whose nutty idea is that? <laughs> Mr. Sebastian. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. You mean you didn't ask why he wants to organize a syndicate? Look, when you get a chance to hook up with a man like Lucas Sebastian, you don't go asking foolish questions. Everything that man touches turns to gold. Uh, you must be talking about Jed Clampett. That sounds like a perfect description. Oh, no, no, Fleming, John. I was talking about the man who's going to head up our new syndicate. Lucas Sebastian. Well, what are we going to finance? Home movies? Oh, of course not. Uh, Mr. Sebastian wants you to see a film about this project. Yes, he has a brilliant plan to farm the depths of the ocean. Farm the depths of the ocean? How does that sound to you, Fleming? Well, if Jet Clampett goes for it, you can count me in. He's yet to make a wrong move. One of the shrewdest investors I've ever seen. Yes, I, I make all his investments. You know, a classic example is that broken down movie studio he picked up for a song. Five million, wasn't it? Uh, five and a half. I you hear want... that? Five and a half million dollars. And I'll bet anything is worth 25 today. And the man's a genius. It's my idea. <laughs> I'm the genius. By the way, Milton, where is Clampett? He's coming, isn't he? Well, of course he's coming. And when he gets here, he'll tell you himself that I'm the brains behind his every move. So, put together a little of this and a little of that and come up with a Bodine gasoline bill. You drop it in a tank of water and a car will run on it, huh? Yes, sir. We should run on it right now. Hmm. Seem to be chugging along good as ever. Makes no difference. I'll switch back to the gasoline tank so you can see for yourself. Seem to be running as good on gas as it did on your water. Uh oh. Uh oh, what? Got the valve in backwards. We've been running on gas. Right now he's running on water. Right now we ain't running. I'll switch back to gas.
Good morning, Miss Hathaway. Why, uh, Mr. Sebastian, I have your film all ready to project. Oh, thank you. Ah, this is a little token of my appreciation for your scholarly interest in my undersea farming project. Oh, you, you shouldn't have, really. Oh, my goodness. Why, it's a, a sponge? Yes, one of the finest ever brought up by my divers. Well, but why, it's, it's absolutely magnificent, just... Beautiful. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Yes. <laughs> Gentlemen, Mr. Lucas Sebastian. Mr. Sebastian, welcome, welcome. I'm Milburn Drysdale. This is a great honor. A great pleasure. How do you do, sir? You know, meeting you is a privilege I've been looking forward to for many years. And I... <laughs> oh, I'd like to present... Mr. Fleming Pendleton and Mr. John Cannaday. Mr. Drysdale, yeah. my hand. Uh, what, what about it? I'd like it back. <laughs> Gentlemen, uh, shake hands with Mr. Lucas Sebillion. Oh, Sebastian. <laughs> How do you do, sir? How do you do, Mr. Sebastian? Oh, right. Sit down, sit down. <laughs> Have some champagne? Have you uh, are? Oh, uh, no, I, no, I'm on a very strict diet. What? Yes, uh, if, in fact, if you don't mind, I think I'll sit over there where I won't be tempted. <laughs> Tired? <laughs> Take this caviar back to the store and get my hundred bucks. But the can has been opened. Solder it up. <laughs> right now, Uncle Jed. Step down on that old starter. Still full of bodine gasoline, huh? Yes. But I'll get it running. Well, I better commence walking. I'm late now. Hey, no, no, Uncle Jed. I promised I'd get you to the bank on this truck, and I'm going to do it. Ow. You steer, I'll push. <laughs> I'm sure Mr. Clampett will be here any moment. He's never late. Well, he's late now. My time is limited. Now, if these gentlemen would care to see the film, I'd be happy to run it for them. If not, I'll be leaving. No, run it, run it. Now, hold it, Melvin, hold it. I, I'd rather wait for Jed Clampett, wouldn't you, John? Right. Oh, well, sorry, gentlemen. Perhaps we can get together on another project. No, 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 no. Here we go. <laughs> go time. <laughs> Beneath the oceans that cover 70% of our globe lie the fields and farms of the future. In these very waters, where my divers once harvested sponges, we will harvest a crop of plankton and undersea vegetation worth billions. Well, gentlemen, the purpose of this syndicate is to develop and build the heavy equipment necessary for submarine harvesting on a commercially practical scale. I think we can do it on a piddling hundred million, what do you say? <laughs> they're in, they're in. All right, gentlemen. Well, we'd, we'd like to caucus for a moment in the outer office. Oh, well, uh, please be brief. I'm due at my club in ten minutes. We'll be a moment. What do you think, Fleming? Well, it worries me that Clampett didn't show up. If this undersea farming was worth anything, he'd be here. That's a pretty new concept. Maybe he doesn't know about it. You kidding? Nothing gets by that old fox. <laughs> oh, hey, Jane Hathaway here. Oh, where is Mr. Clampett? What's that? Trying out a new discovery? <laughs> a chemical that turns water into gasoline? Hear that? Fantastic. Wonder he isn't here. You say Jethro invented it? I told you the kid was a genius. <laughs> Got to get in on it. Yeah, Gotta find Clampett. Tell Melbourne that we had to leave. 
But what about the Ocean Farming Syndicate? Maybe he can sell it to a seagull. Yeah. It's for the birds. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Ellie. When you hear from your father, would you please ask him to call? Thank you, dear. Bye. Well, fellas, what? They're gone, Chief. But the Syndicate? I'm afraid they're not interested. Oh. Well, I'd say that about wraps things up, Drysdale. Apparently, your bank doesn't have the clientele for something this big. Good day. No, no, wait, wait. Mr. Clampett's big enough. Kindly remove that tourniquet from my arm. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Clampett didn't put in an appearance. But he will, he will. Sorry, I'm late for a massage at my club. He's on his way. I know he is. <laughs> on that last hill. <laughs> Mr. Sebastian, wait. Let's drive up well, to Mr. Clampett. I told you I'm late for a massage. But I'll massage you on the way. I'm really very good. <laughs> I'll find him and bring him over to the club. You'll like him. He's a wonderful man. <laughs> Miss Hathaway? Mr. Clampett, where have you been? Everyone's looking for you. Well, I had a little inventor trouble. Is the syndicate meeting over? Yes, but there's still time for you to get together with Mr. Sebastian, and it's very important that you do. How come? Well, he has a brilliant new plan for producing food. Is he a farmer? In a sense, but I'll let him explain it to you. I'll have Jethro rush you right over to the Oxford Club. Well, uh, Jethro's my tuckered out. He just pushed a truck four miles at a dead run. <laughs> Whereabouts is this Oxford Club? Well, actually, it's just up Wilshire a couple of blocks. Oh, shucks, I'll walk over. Well, uh, you'll find Mr. Sebastian in the massage room. I, I do hope you'll see your way clear to help make his dream a reality. Well, I'll do the best I can. Uh, I'm sorry about missing the meeting. Jethro done the best he could. All's well that ends well. <laughs> oh, 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 Joe! Take it easy. Have a heart. I'm sorry, Mr. Sebastian. You told me not to show you any mercy till the last of those 20 pounds were gone. Yeah, but Joe, I've been doing my best. I, I've been starving myself for three days. Oh, don't give me that. I heard about those donuts this morning. Oh? Who informed on me? I just happened to date the waitress at the coffee shop. Oh, I gave a $10 tip. Oh. And you promised me a $100 tip if we got rid of those pounds by tonight. And I'm gonna do it. Yeah, but Joe, 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 just let me rest for, for a couple of minutes, eh? Well, okay, just for a couple, though. And then I'm going to beat you, bake you, boil you, steam you, and fry you until those pounds come off. <laughs> All right, it's a deal. Just let me have 40 winks. Huh? Yes, sir, something I can do for you? Well, uh, howdy. My name is Jed Clampett. I'm looking for uh, Mr. Sebastian. Is he here? Yeah, but he's asleep right now. Down here in the basement? Right over there on the table. Does he sleep here a lot? Whenever I let him. Well, uh, maybe I better go and come back another time. Is he expecting you? Well, I kind of think he's uh, hoping I'll drop by. Well, maybe I better let him know you're here then. Well, no, I wouldn't. Oh, that's all right. I was going to wake him up to work him over anyway. <laughs> okay, nap time's up. There's a Mr. Clampett here to see you. Huh? Oh. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Clampett? Uh, uh, howdy, Mr. Sebastian. Uh, I'll shower and get dressed. Oh, no, you don't. You're going to stay right here. You've paid for those donuts. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Now, here, here, hold on. Oh, no, 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 no. He, he's right, Mr. Clampett. I ate those donuts, and this is the only way I can pay the price. Well, let me pay. Oh. <laughs> well, it's better get beat up. Uh, you don't understand, Mr. Clampett. I... Just have to learn how to keep away from food. Well, you starve. <laughs> I have been starving. <laughs> Three days. Ah, doggies, Mr. Sebastian. I got to admire your pride. Found <laughs> <laughs> uh, a way, Joe. <laughs> you. 
I'm in some place called the Oxford Club, trying to help this poor farmer. I tell you, Granny, he's a pitiful case. He sleeps in the cellar on a hard table, no clothes on his back, and ain't got the price of two donuts. You gonna grub stake him, Jed? I'm sure gonna try, but it ain't gonna be easy. He's poor, but uncommon proud. He'd rather take a beating than let me pay for his donut. <laughs> Into the rollers. <laughs> no, no, not the rollers. Not yeah, the rollers. No, no, no. On, no. Granny, I gotta get out of here before I tangle with a fellow that runs this place. He's the meanest, ornery critter I ever seen. <laughs> Poor Mr. Sebastian can't pay him the money he owes, and dog, if this rascal ain't determined to squeeze it out of his hide. Fetch the poor fellow home, Jed. Least ways we can give him bed and board. Okay, into the sweat box. Oh, oh no, Joe, no. No, not the torture chamber, Joe. Let me ride the bicycle. In the box. No, Joe, no. Uh, oh. Granny, I'm afraid it's going to take a scrap to get Mr. Sebastian out of here. That fella Joe done took the wheel off his bicycle. <laughs> Thank you for towing me home, Miss Jane. That's all right, dear boy. Glad to do it. Uh, Jethro, I still think I should have towed you to a garage to have this engine reassembled. Heck, fire, Miss Jane. I can fix it. All I got to do is figure out where to connect these leftovers. <laughs> well, bon chance. Uh, I want your Uncle Jed to have this. He and Mr. Sebastian may be going into business together. Thing I graduated sixth grade. I hate to tackle this without education. <laughs> ah, you know, Joe, I just weighed myself and I'm down to, uh... Joe. Joe, where are you? Oh, let me out of here. Get me out of this thing. <laughs> Well, what happened to you, Joe? Well, uh, you remember when I let you out of the steam cabinet there and you, and you kind of staggered into the shower room? Yes. Well, uh, Mr. Clampett came over and gave me a $20 bill. Asked me if that would satisfy me. Well, I thought he wanted a massage. So I said, take off your clothes and I'll work you over. And? Well, that's the last thing I remember till I woke up in here. <laughs> You know, Joe, I'm beginning to wonder if I should accept Mr. Clampett's invitation to dinner. What is it, Granny? According to Miss Jane, it's something that Mr. Sebastian grows on his farm. And a prize one, too. When's it gonna be done? I don't know, child. I've been stewing it for better than an hour. And it still ain't tender. Well, that smell good. Well, I put in a little piece of salt pork for seasoning. <laughs> Let's just let it simmer there. You come and help me pick some dandelion greens to go with it. See, you got some clothes. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> Mrs. Sebastian was telling me that's hand-loomed Irish tweed. Got it on Bond Street. Well, now, don't you worry. It looks fine. <laughs> Want to borrow my razor? <laughs> I got a little surprise for you, Mrs. Sebastian. You hungry? Uh, oh, I've never been so hungry in my life. There you are. Two dozen of the finest donuts money can buy. Just a warren and sugar. For me? For you and no strings attached. No. Proudest man I ever seen. Well, I reckon it wasn't.
would have took the edge off of Granny's vittles anyhow. I'm sure she's got something wonderful cooking. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. No doubt just to have a taste, but you know me and mushrooms. <laughs> Sit down, boy. What you hiding behind you there? Uh, this is a picture of you when you was my age. What you doing with that? Well, I was hoping it'd jog your memory a mite. Granny says when this picture was took, you was a lady killer, a cast cat. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, Granny liked to stretch the truth when, uh... What are you doing? Notice the resemblance? <laughs> what do you want, boy? I want some advice on how to get girls. Well, I ain't the one to give you that. I wasn't a lady killer at Cass County. You wasn't? No. There's plenty of fellas had me backed off. There was, uh... Well, let me see now. There was, uh... <laughs> now, you take a... <laughs> what do you want to know, boy? <laughs> I want to know just exactly how you went about getting a girl. Well, as I recollect, I done my best girl getting on Saturday afternoons. Yes, sir. I used to get all slicked up and uh, go into town and stake out a good spot in front of the general store and go to Whitland. Whitland? Yep. On a long piece of soft pine, just about like that. Of course, out of the corner of my eye, I was watching the girls. <laughs> I see. <laughs> right now, let me warn you about something. You gotta keep half your mind on your watching and half on your whittling. A little too much of one or the other, and you'll ever lose a girl or a finger. <laughs> well, now, I didn't do none of my fancy whittling until I seen a pretty girl come along. Then I would peel off about a foot and a half. I'd peel off about a foot and a half curl. So thin. I'd peel off about a foot and a half curl. Uh, you got to remember that I ain't done much uh, girl getting whittling for a number of years. <laughs> and then what happened, Uncle Jeff? Then I'd show her a few of my fancy mumly peg throws, like my three and a half off the wrist, or my side uh, spinner off the ear, or the nose winder. And while I was doing that, I'd mentioned the barn dance that night, and before you know it, uh, we was acquainted. Hot dog! Yeehaw! Yeehaw! <laughs> what was all that for? He just full of oats, Granny. I declare that boy will eat anything. He ain't been eating them, he just feels them. Oh. Huh? Jeff Rose says you told him how to get a girl. Yep. Well, tell me so, so I can get a fella. Well, I don't think it'll uh, work for a girl, Ellie. Uh, you'd best ask Granny how to get a fella. Well, would you tell me, Granny? Let me think about it. Oh, please. I'm going to do it. I just want to think about it. <laughs> At my age, you got to take your fun where you find it. <laughs> now, as I recollect, us girls used to do our best hunting in front of the general store on a Saturday afternoon. Well, how come? Because that's where the fellas used to stand and pretend to whittle whilst they watched the girls. <laughs> Granny, I ain't never seen fellas whittling in front of stores in Beverly Hills. Yeah. 
Come to think of it, they probably ain't no boys around today that dumb. <laughs> Got my pocket knife ready, Uncle Jim? <laughs> Uncle Jed, I got plenty of that soft woodland wood you told me to get. Uh, yeah, now listen, boy, I got some more to tell you. Shucks, Uncle Jed, you done told me all I need to know. If I go to peeling off them long curls, I got it made. I'm gonna be the lady killer of Beverly Hills. <laughs> Granny, I didn't realize the boy was so desperate. Ellie, too. Or if she ain't, she ought to be. I can't go on telling folks she's 14 forever. <laughs> we have got to meet other young'uns. And there's only one sure way to do it, city or country. A, a wing ding. ding. <laughs> a wing ding? That's what Mr. Clavett said he wanted, the biggest wing ding in town. Well, don't stand there. Go out and buy it for him. <laughs> a wing ding is a dance, a party. Oh, good. You know, I've been wanting to throw a big party for Mr. Clavett, and now that he's paying for it, let's go all out. <laughs> Not to be for Mr. Clavett, it's for Ellie and Jethro, so they can meet other young people. Oh, I see. A party and a dance for young people. Okay, let's give those kids a real thrill. We'll get Guy Lombardo. <laughs> Swing and sway with Sammy Kay. I'm afraid not. I've got it. Clyde McCoy. <laughs> Chief, the young people today just aren't dancing to those groups anymore. Well, what's the matter with these kids today? A bunch of squares? <laughs> Hardly, but, but time marches on, vogues change. Right now, groups like the Beatles are all the rage. The who? The Beatles. They're the most popular group in the world. Why, they get as much as $100,000 for one appearance. They do? Yes. <laughs> Last year alone, they made something like $14 million. Well, let's get them. For the Clavett party? No, for depositors. <laughs> Getting back to the Clavett wing day. Just take care of it. anything they want. Well, uh, inasmuch as the Clampets aren't acquainted out here, they've asked me to make arrangements for the music. Now, the Beatles aren't available, but there are groups who have a similar appeal. Herman and the Hermits, Freddie and the Dreamers, the Animals, the Birds. Of course, they probably aren't available on short notice either, but there, here are some others on my list. If I paid them four and a half percent and loaned it out at seven and a half... <laughs> no, no, make that eight. <laughs> yes? For the Clampet Wingding, I may be able to get the lizards, the frogs, the termites. Well, get them, get them. Whatever Granny wants to cook. <laughs> oh, I've been doing some figuring. And to help you land that beetle account, I'll make that a set of dishes for each of them. I'll throw in a bowl of artificial flowers and a plastic meat platter. Gee, Chief, you've taken all the challenge out of it. <laughs> Jethro, glad you're back. What's the matter? You look like somebody dropped a clod in your churn. <laughs> Jim, I didn't do no good at all with that whittling. You got no other way of meeting girls? Matter of fact, I hate them. Good. And fellas, too. I don't care nothing about them, just girls. <laughs> For Ellie Mae. And there's gonna be plenty of both. We're gonna throw you young as a wing day. Thank you, Pop. I'm just ashamed not to have done it sooner. We gonna have lots of vittles and pretty girls? And music and dancing? And vittles and pretty girls? And games and and stuff? And vittles and pretty girls, huh? That's our word for it, youngins. We gonna put the big pot on the little one. <laughs> Greetings, all. Holding a family conference, are you? I was just telling the youngins about our wing ding. Miss Jane's gonna take care of getting the music first. Who you gonna get, Miss Jane? Well, I thought I'd spend the evening going to the places frequented by young people and auditioning the various musical groups. Sound like a dandy idea. Yes. Of course, it'd be even dandier if I had someone to accompany me. Well, I'll go. Oh, well, 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 perhaps. <laughs> Speak up, Jethro. Oh, I don't care if Ellie goes. <laughs> well, I think that uh, Granny's going to need Ellie to help her in the kitchen tonight. But uh, how about Jethro going? Jethro? Now, that's a thought, if you'd like to. Why, he is just squirming to go, ain't you, boy? Yeah. Oh, that's splendid, Jethro. I'll pick you up early. That will give us time to catch the lizards, the frogs, the termites, and possibly even the moles. Thanks, Miss Jean, but uh, you just worry about the music. Uh, Granny will take care of the videos. <laughs> yes. Well, Au revoir. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
We get it full of uh, corn shucks and hay bales and pumpkins. One thing or another, that front hall is going to look pretty good. Well, I sure hope Jethro and Miss Jane find some good music tonight. Hey, well, where'd they go, Granny? Well, let's see. They started out at a place called something a go go. <laughs> well, just so they come up with a good fiddle player. <laughs> Don't you walk home by, pretty woman. Don't you make me cry, pretty woman. If that's the way it must be okay I guess I'll go on home and sleep Maybe Jane? tomorrow night Well, Miss Jane, where are you? What do I see? Huh? I know it's plumb past daylight, but Jethro is sleeping in this morning. I gotta say one thing for California, Jed. No matter what time of year, you can always find flowers. Want me to get these in water for you, Granny? Please, honey. And then put them around in the parlor. Because that's where the old folks are going to sit tonight while you young'uns are dancing. Well, aren't you going to dance? Of course I am. I'm talking about old folks. <laughs> Dug up all the rocking chairs we got, Granny. But they ain't gonna be enough for all the old folks to rock. Well, I'll pass around my rheumatism medicine. And them that ain't rocking will think they is. March! <laughs> Good morning, Granny. Mr. Clement? Good morning. Are you all right? All right. Do you know what time I got up this morning? Six o'clock. Jethro's sleeping in, too. We all have mornings when we don't feel like getting out of bed. <laughs> I feel wonderful. I marched all the way from my house. Well, that's a good hundred yards. <laughs> I guess I am a little bushed. You look about the way Jethro did when he dragged in last night. Yeah. Him and Miss Jane was out awful late. Yeah, the boy was dead on his feet, but uh, he said that they found some mighty fine music for our wingding at that go-go place. Plenty of young folks, too. Jethro hauled off and invited everybody that was there. Well, I'm glad to know the music and guests are taken care of. Oh, by the way, did Miss Hathaway mention whether she had located the Beatles? Beatles? Oh, I hope they ain't got into her garden. Them is the peskiest bugs. Especially the potato beans. No, no, no. This is a group that sings and plays musical instruments. The tickets, you say? <laughs> oh, yes, they're famous. They appear all over. They make a fabulous amount of money. Singing Beatles, huh? Well, let me know if Miss Jean finds them. I'd pay a quarter to see that myself. <laughs> no, no, no. You're still... They're uh, like, uh... well, never mind. I, I saw a picture of them, and I'm still confused. <laughs> Jethro, did you get some good music for the wing day? Did I ever? Well, you see them, Ellie. Four fellas that really wail. Well, uh, tell me about it. You'll meet them when I fetch them home this evening. Right now, I got to go into town and get me some clothes and do something about my hair. Well, Granny, I cut your hair. Cut it? Gee. <laughs> Dazelle? 
Good morning, Ellie. Let me get you a cup of coffee. Oh, thank you. How about a bowl of... <laughs> Ellie Mae, there was three boxes of flakes in there. Well, Jethro just finished breakfast. <laughs> well, glad the boy's up. We can go out and get the decorations. Jethro's gone to town, Pa. Said he'd be back this evening. This evening? Well, we ain't gonna have time to fetch the trimmings for the hall. Well, let me take care of that for you, Mr. Clavett. Well, can you get hay and corn and pumpkins and such? Anything you want. I'll have it brought in by the truckload. I'd like some autumn leaves, if it don't cost too much. Hang the cost. I enjoy spending money on my friends, especially when they can afford it. <laughs> getting home. Well, where'd you get all this stuff? Never mind. Now get upstairs and change your clothes. Where's them fellas you was gonna fetch home? Miss Jane's bring them. Here, Ellie. There's more on the truck. Now, Granny, you got this place looking like a barn. No, thanks to you. <laughs> get upstairs and change your clothes. Come on, now. <laughs> what is it, Ellie? Well, I ain't sure, Paul. It can't be a fiddle. There ain't no bow with it. <laughs> Not a banjo. It ain't round and it ain't got no skin on it. It's gonna like a guitar, except it ain't holler. And it don't hardly make no sound at all. You reckon this is what the music fellas is gonna play? I hope not. If your pa calls the dancers above a whisper, he'll drown them out. I'll see what else is on the truck. Jethro. What's the matter? Well, he said Miss Jane was fetching fellas. She just drove up with a whole carload of girls. <laughs> it was an honest mistake, Ellie. These girls are right, but they dress like fellers. <laughs> Your winding musicians are here. Hey, howdy, young fellas. Uh, uh lady? Well, welcome, everybody. <laughs> these are the Clappets. Clappets, these are the enemies. Yeah. Oh, hi, how are you? She say they was the enemies? Huh. I'm glad they ain't on our side. <laughs> oh, they have some other things to unload. Oh, good. Uh, say, excuse me, but uh, did any of y'all play the fiddle? Well, if it's got a beat, we can fake it. <laughs> what do you make of it, Jed? Jethro's got some explaining to do. What about? <laughs> How about this, huh? <laughs> Boy, have you looked in the mirror? Why? Is my wig on crooked? Your hands on crooked. Why'd you get yourself up like that? Well, this is the way all the fellas looks now. Heck far, Paul. I ain't gonna have no fun tonight if all the fellas look like girls. Well, cheer up, Ellie. It might be some sport just sorting them out. <laughs> Hello, Granny. I wanted to get by earlier. How's the wing ding? Are the young people dancing? No! They're twitching and jumping like a bunch of worms on a hot rock. <laughs> no wonder they got long hair. They can't stand still long enough to get it cut. I, I hope Mr. Clavett isn't too upset. No. Jed's finally got him quieting down. He's trying to learn him to square dance. Wonderful. Let's go see how he's doing. Right hand, your partner. Left hand. Both hands, your partner. Now you see how easy it is, especially when I call out the moves for you. Now you reckon you can play that uh, turkey in a straw tune? Oh, sure. Dandy. Let's get going.
parlor with a jug and a rocker. I'm with her. <laughs> Ellie? I'm with them. Me too, Ellie. Target flaking, Granny. We tried smearing molasses on that rock over yonder and picking flies off it. Yeah, not many of them showed up. Must be too cold. <laughs> okay, Paul. Y'all can commence the shooting now. Where's your target? See that tree at the bottom of the holler? You call that shooting? No, ma'am. But see that board leaning up against it? Ellie can hit that with her slingshot. <laughs> we ain't shooting at the board, Granny. We just fixing to drive them nails sticking in it. <laughs> Still say that ain't hill country shooting. Granny's right, boy. See that rock over on the left? Yes, sir. Let's ricochet off that and then drive the nail. Good. How far do you make that to be? Oh, about a hundred yards. Too close for this gun. <laughs> All right, boy. Every other one. This distance. That's the truth. Why don't we all go out in the country where we can do some real shooting? Now, yeah! yeah. <laughs> Ravenswood, what is going on? Oh, it's the Clampets, madam. Well, go over there and command them to cease at once. Begging your pardon, madam, having survived the Battle of Britain, I don't wish to press my luck. Then summon the police. Oh, Mr. Drysdale has forbidden any such action. Well, something has to be done. This is Daddy's first visit. One look at those savages and he'll take the next plane back to Boston. Maybe they'll prove somewhat of a shock to the old gentleman. A shock? My father doesn't even know that people like that exist. He's spent his entire life among the aristocracy of Back Bay, Boston. Why, well, he hasn't even accepted Milburn yet. We've been married 25 years. Well, speaking of your husband, madam, perhaps he could persuade the Clampets to take a trip. That money-hungry bourgeois. He's afraid to let them out of his sight. I'll do it. I must do it for Daddy's sake. Tell Perkins to pick me up at the Clampets. We'll go to the airport from there. Yes, madam. Where much shall we go, Uncle Jed? Well, let's head for some tall timber. I hear there's a place out that way called West Wood. Sounds dandy. We ain't seen no real wood since we left the hill. Better roll, boy. Hi, White Fox. Hi, Yonder comes Miss Drosdale. On the double, too. Wait, wait. Hi, Miss Drosdale. Want to come out in the country with us and do a little shooting? Uh, no, no, Mr. Clampett. My father is arriving from Boston this morning. I do tell. Well, ain't that nice. I don't believe we ever met you, Paul. I know. You never met anyone like you, either. <laughs> don't they have millionaires in Boston? <laughs> that wasn't what I meant, but never mind. I'm here to ask a very great favor. We'll ask away. Anything at all. Just tell us what we can do. Well, you see, Daddy is one of the leading citizens of Boston, and uh, this will be his first visit out here. And I'm terribly anxious to make a good impression. And, well, I guess I'll just have to come right to the point. His plane will be arriving soon. 
Could I persuade you, Clampets, to take a little trip? Why, you bet you can. Wonderful. We'll go right out to the airport and fetch him. <laughs> what? Billy and me will stay here so you can go along. Sure. You and your pa can ride up here on the bench. Good thinking, girls. Dandy view from up there. She can show them the sights. You too, Duke. Come on down. Oh, no, no, Mr. Clampett. Well, all right, if you want to take him. Uh, you're Paul Parshall the Hound Dogs, is he? <laughs> Never see a finer one than old Duke. Just keep you warm up there, too. Come on, Mr. Ideal. No, I wouldn't think of letting you drive me to the airport. Why, shucks, it's our pleasure. It'll show your Paul what kind of neighbors you got. My father doesn't even know there are neighbors like you. If you met him at the airport, he'd faint dead away. No fooling. A little act of kindness like that. <laughs> Wonder why she changed her mind. It seems her pa ain't used to friendly neighbors. I know how he feels. That Boston must be a heap like Beverly Hills. Yeah, but Miss Drysdale figured meeting us right off might be too much for him. Poor old fellow. <laughs> Milbert, Daddy is here. Rise. <laughs> Hilbert, my boy. Welcome to California, Mr. Farquhar. Your first visit, I believe. Yes. Daddy has never been west of Copley Square. Well, and how was your trip? Daddy had a dreadful experience. He had to change planes in Las Vegas. I had no idea places like that existed. Poor Daddy. How long were you there? Six days. <laughs> Well, Margaret, I just couldn't take any plane, you know. Yes, of course. It must have been terrible. Oh, pretty rugged. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse us for a moment, dear, I have some business to discuss with your husband. Do you hear that, Mildred? Daddy wants to discuss business with you. Listen carefully. <laughs> well, Milbert, my boy, you got tapped in Vegas, huh? Murdered. <laughs> That's an expression I heard up there. <laughs> of course, it would be a simple matter for me to telephone my bank in Boston. <laughs> no, you didn't let me finish. I'm overdrawn there. You, a Farquhar, overdrawn? Yes, yes. I have kept it from my daughter to spare her pride. But ever since her mother passed on, I have met with a series of financial reverses. Well, I suppose it's that I miss her so, you know. <laughs> well, now, an old man needs something to turn to in, in his grief. <laughs> now, if we could arrange a little something to tide me over... How much do you want to borrow? Oh, I'm not asking to borrow money. No? No. I'll roll you high dice. <laughs> Forget it. Now, look, I'm glad to have you stay at the house. You have a nice room, plenty of food, but I will not finance your gambling. In fact, you should seek a cure. Would you like to finance that? <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Any money you want, you'll have to wheedle from your daughter. I give her a very generous allowance. You know, son, for 25 years, the Farquhars have looked down on you. We always felt Margaret married beneath her. And you know something? We were right. Daddy, before we go home, I must prepare you for a shop. He hasn't cut off your allowance. No, no. It's about our next door neighbors, the Clampets. They're terrible people. Well, how terrible? Oh, they're simply unbelievable. Peasants. Little better than cave dwellers. Well, why does Milburn tolerate them? They have $50 million in his bank. How much did you say? Fifty million. Daddy. Daddy. Hmm? Oh, oh, yes, dear, yes, yes. Steal yourself for the Clampets. I'm ready, dear. I'm ready. <laughs> You say those uh, millionaires, uh, <clears throat> uh, those um, peasants, uh, they live over that way, huh? Yes. 
Mercifully, the hedge conceals them from view. Ah. Uh, money hasn't changed them at all, huh? Not a bit. They don't know what to do with it. You don't say. <laughs> Daddy, they're such a blight. If only someone could rid the neighborhood of them. Well, I'll do what I can to <coughs> clean them out. <laughs> Stay away from them, Daddy, please. Uh, beg pardon, madam. The upstairs maid wishes to speak to you. Oh, excuse me, Daddy. Ravensworth, sir, Mr. Farquhar. Yes, madam. Uh, just, uh, uh, just plain, uh, Ravenwood. Yes, sir. Oh, tell me, those, uh, clampets, uh, next door, I suppose they're a rowdy group, huh? Gamble a lot, play poker, shoot dice? Oh, no, sir, they're simple people. Rustic types. Oh, rustic, huh? <laughs> well, that'll help. <laughs> oh, say, this is superb. Now, you didn't learn to make tea like this out here. No, sir. In the old country, sir. The home of superb tea. Really? You don't talk like a Bostonian. <laughs> Natalie! <laughs> you must be Miss Drysdale's pa. Uncle Jed said you were skittish. Yes, yes, yes. Who are you? Who are you? I'm Jethro Bodine. Oh, oh, for a moment I thought you might be one of the Clampets. Well, I am. Uncle Jed's my uncle, Cousin Ellie's my cousin, and Granny's my grandma. <laughs> Genealogically speaking, that computes. <laughs> huh? There are four of you. Uh, just a minute. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, what's your name? Lowell Redlings Farquhar. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> well, that's really my name. Well, would you mind if I just called you Shorty? <laughs> Well, all right, go ahead, Jethro. Thank you. I hope I ain't friendly enough to you too fast, but Granny won't bust out the company vittles till he's all good acquainted. As a matter of fact, I'm anxious to get all good acquainted with you clampets, too. Well, hot dog, let's go! Yeah. Here, 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 wait! How are you doing? Jed, my possum is coming on for done to a turn. How long are we gonna have to wait for that Boston fella to get unskittish? Well, if Miss Drysdale don't fetch him over here to meet us pretty soon, we're gonna have to figure out a way to commence breaking the ice. I can do that. Got a little icebreaker right here. Don't get too handy with that jug. You might be a temperance man. <laughs> Jeff Rose is coming with Miss Drysdale's pal. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Here's my Uncle Jed, my cousin Ellie, my granny. How you? Come on, Shorty, let's go wash up and eat. Yes, sir. Put that man down. I tried that, Uncle Jed, but he couldn't keep up with me. Thank you. I'm real sorry, Mr. Farquhar, but when Jethro has an empty stomach, he gets a head to match. Now, boy, you go in the parlor and lay a fire. Well, ain't we gonna eat? Do like I tell you. Gee whiz, after I went and toted him over here, introduced him and everything, you going upstairs and put on a pretty party dress. Yes, sir, Pop. Well, well. How do you like your possum, Mr. Farquhar? Falling off the bones tender or with a little fight left in it? I beg your pardon. Did you say possum? Dad and Jed, he can't believe his good luck. <laughs> Just took it the same as always, Granny, and it'll be finger licking good. You boys enjoy yourself. I'll call you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, what would you like to do, Mr. Farquhar? Well, I don't know. We might chat a little, or... I don't suppose you play cards. Well, I have held a couple of hands of whist. Uh, what do you have in mind? Uh, well, I came across a new game on the way out here. Uh, something called, uh, poker. <laughs> yeah, I've heard of that. Uh, of course, I never played any. It looked like a lot of fun. <laughs> Shall we give it a try? Well, I'm sorry, but I haven't got a deck of cards in the house. <laughs> well, it just so happened that I have some here. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, I play solitaire a lot now that I'm a widower. Widower now. <laughs> Seen his game played once, huh? Yes, that's right. 
You sure pick it up in a hurry. <laughs> yes, didn't I? <laughs> now, each one of these matches is worth a hundred dollars. What tickets you see? <laughs> oh, I have to speak to Jethro. He uses a thousand dollars worth just getting the fire going. <laughs> <laughs> is that right? <laughs> Now, we'll start off by playing a little game called Seven-Toed Pete. I thought we were going to play poker. It's the same thing. You learn me as we go along, huh? Uh, you can depend upon it. <laughs> what a nice you. It's a pleasure. I'm kind of ashamed of myself. I ain't learning this game worth shucks. Oh, no, no. You're doing fine. Fine, fine. I'll tell you what, um, we'll double the stakes, and that way you'll have a chance to catch up. Well, I wouldn't want you to break the rules just for me. Oh, th th I'm glad to do it. Would you like me to deal once you've been doing it all? No, 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 I'm not tired. How's it going? Oh, fine, fine. You boys shouldn't play with matches. <laughs> We's ready for that possum any time, Granny. Yeah, uh, 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 it's gone, Jed. Gone? That stomach that walks like a boy. Got it. This news is going to lay heavy on Mr. Farquhar. Yeah. Huh? Oh, yes, yes. I'll be greatly disappointed. I can open up a can of something. That'll be fine. Now, let's see. I can give you can crawdads, <laughs> crow gizzards, Hawk eggs, gopher shanks. Why don't you surprise us, Granny? Uh, 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 no surprise. I'm really not hungry, you know. I know how you feel. When you got your heart set on baked possum, nothing else sounds good. How true, how true. Can three play this game? Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do sit down. And we'll open up another box of matches. <laughs> Give Granny some matches, eh, will you? <laughs> You'll enjoy this. Margaret, they told me at the club to rush right home. What's the matter? What happened? Have we been robbed? Oh, no. Daddy has disappeared. For that, you called me off the golf course? <laughs> Listen, Margaret, I had John Cushing two strokes down on the ninth hole. I was a cinch to win $20. Well, I don't think you understand the gravity of this situation. One moment, Daddy was sitting here having tea, and the next moment, he was gone. Well, that's one relative who doesn't wear out his welcome. He's on the ground, and there's no trace of Mr. Farquhar. Call the FBI! Call the drugstore. He's probably out in front matching coins. Oh, no, you lout. My father is a Farquhar. Do you think he'd stoop to gambling? No, of course not, dear. I was only joking. Uh, <laughs> Granny, uh, let me deal now, will you? Oh, I don't mind. <laughs> I know, because, Granny, you're getting pretty near as good as Mr. Farquhar. Thank you. But you'll have to learn her that fancy way you deal off the bottom of the deck. Excuse me, Granny. I said Jethro pretty near to town, but he gave me the slip. Well, never mind. Are you hungry yet, Mr. Farquhar? No. Well, you might as well clear the dishes off the fancy eating table. Yes, sir. Too bad we ain't had vittles in the billiard room in some time. Oh? Oh, did you say billiard, uh, billiard room? Yeah, there's a billiard head hanging on the wall. Head? Would you like to see it? You're about out of matches anyway. Yes, I'd like very much to see it, yeah. So this being called a billiard room and that a billiard table, we figured this critter must be a billiard. <laughs> I'm a plain looking, ain't it? I'd say that, yeah. That's the part they put up on the wall. I'd hate to think what the rest of them looks like. <laughs> he must be as heavy as he is homely. You can see this table is built extra stout. Hold up his carcass. Trouble is, it's so big we have to use these pot passers to hand the riddles around. <laughs> Did you know that you could play a game on this table? You don't say. Yes, it's called pool. And you play it with these... Uh, Passers. Oh, no, no, no. Mm. 
I could show it to you if you like. Uh, we could play for matches. Would you like that? Well, it sounds dandy. All right. <laughs> Sure, you've never played pool before? <laughs> nope, but it reminds me for all the world of ricochet shooting. What kind of shooting? Ricochet. That's when you bounce your bullet off a rock before you hit the target. <laughs> Jethro and me does it a lot. <laughs> why, why, you old pirate? Just a minute, Mr. Drysdale, I'm fixing to shoot. <laughs> Now, what was it you wanted, Mr. Drysdale? I don't remember. <laughs> Back him up, Mr. Farquhar. Mr. Farquhar, Ellie May says that these poker matches come to $472,000. Give or take a few thousand. Who took these innocent people for that much? Uh, no, that's what I owe them. <laughs> uh, I don't know where you buy your matches in Boston, Mr. Farquhar, but uh, you're getting overcharged something awful. Now, uh, why don't you take these back with you? You can sell them at a nice profit. You mean that I don't owe them? I'm not expected to pay? Let's forget about the matches. Uh, we'll both enjoy the game better if we don't have to keep track. Well, that is wonderful. Grab yourself a pot pastor, Mr. Drysdale. Rack him up, Mr. Farquhar. <laughs> Don't figure on playing more than an hour, Lowell. I just stuck another possum in the oven for you. <laughs>